the upcoming, uh, this is issues with Taika Waititi. Uh, and what it is is that actors and disability campaigners slam Taika Waititi over TV show casting. And what this is, is they're making a television adaptation or remake of uh, of a famous movie that was called, what was it called? Uh, Time Bandits. Time, Time Bandits. Yeah. And uh, the thing about it is, this was a very, uh, I guess, what would you call it? A cult classic from the 80s. And yeah. uh, so it says, Di- director Taika Waititi has come under fire for casting decisions for his upcoming Apple TV comedy, Time Bandits. The series is based on the Terry Gilliam film, Terry Gilliam of... Uh, Brazil. <laughs> uh, well, I'm saying of what fame? Of oh, um, Monty Python. Monty Python, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, well, no, he made Brazil, too. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, if, I, I, was, I, I was assumed most people would think of... Um, That's Monty my, Python. I, yeah, they would, yeah. Uh, in 1981, <laughs> the gang of time-traveling thieves were all played by people of short stature. In Watiti's version, however, it appears that the bandits are being played by, played by average, sized, a, average height actors, although not all the casting details have yet been announced. The movie has been criticized by Abby Purvis, a Scottish actress and the granddaughter of one of the actors in Gilliam's film, uh, and that was, uh, what was that guy's name? Jack Purvis was the, mm-hmm. the name of that gentleman. Uh, she said the, said the casting of the 10-episode series, which is executive produced by Watiti and his longtime collaborator, uh, Jermaine Clement, uh, was tarnishing her grandfather's legacy. You seem to think that this is her vying for a role in the, fi- or, or in the series or she's bitter that she didn't get offered anything. My cynical side played part of this clip and maybe we should play part of this But does she even have acting She's an actor. So she's, she says that what has she been in? She said that she got into acting because of her grandfather. I don't know what she's been in. Just the fact that she I lives I haven't heard in, of her, that's all. Just the fact that she lives in Scotland might make this harder to cast in general, especially if she's not living in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm going to play a, a, a clip of her, her comments about it and we'll go to, I had it at uh, 1 minute and 14 seconds. She kind of just does an intro about who she is and everything like that. So, warning, trigger warning, Scottish accent. Uh, and I, I don't know incoming. how long the audio is going to be, so bear with me, guys. But now it's there in black and white that the Time Bandits have been cast as average height. Now, I don't know why this has happened. Maybe there's a reason, but I definitely don't know it. And there's someone who is of short stature. I'm sort of baffled by it. So, Time Bandits is the only film that's ever represented people like me in a way that isn't seen as a goblin or one of Snow White's seven little men. This was a film that changed the times, and it was ahead of the times, to be honest, because people like me weren't treated the same as they are now. Virgin... That was a uh, kind of a, a tacit admission that things have changed, at least, that, that we've grown as a culture. A generation that is so big on talking about inclusivity and diversity and making sure that everyone's heard, this whole casting choice just seems absurd. The fact that you've taken an 80s film that is quite a niche and tried to almost make it normal to fit in with the industry really just clarifies everything that I've ever thought about the fact that people like me are forgotten about in the TV and film and theatre industry. Thoughts? This is infuriating because I was just reading Peter Dinklage's comments about Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. The Seven Dwarves being... uh, erased af- from from the new film mm-hmm. after his comments came out is like there's been pushback on that they were never planning to do that well disney only came out and said yeah, that and they said so were after. planning on they by the way they probably hadn't even begun filming yeah by the point that he made this comment he assumed that they were going to include the seven dwarves in the new snow white movie and that's when they corrected it yeah. so he said Literally, no offense to anyone, but I was a little taken aback when they were very proud to cast a Latina actress as Snow White. You're still telling the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Take a step back and look at what you're doing there. It makes no sense to me. 
He said, you're progressive in one way and you're still making that effing backwards story about seven dwarves living in a cave together. What the F are you doing, man? Have I done nothing to advance the cause from my soapbox? I guess I'm not loud enough. He said it's... <laughs> I think... <laughs> If you tell the story of Snow White with the most effed up progressive spin on it, let's do it all in. But I just don't know. So he is fully admitting that he's been preaching from a soapbox for years about inclusion. Yep. He now feels like he's not being listened to. And then this much younger actress with dwarfism is saying exactly the opposite thing to him and activists don't know how to respond hollywood doesn't know how to respond because they're looking for how to be the most marketable after um after he made those comments the pro wrestler hornswoggle came out and said look you just took the jobs away from seven people that could have very much used that work but then there are there's a Peter Dinklage around every corner trying to say that it's offensive to cast to like typecast them in general. And I mean, it's basically a situation where you can't win no matter what angle you go for. If you're trying to be culturally sensitive by not casting the yeah. seven dwarves in Snow White, or you're trying to be culturally sensitive by, uh, including them yeah. in Time Bandits. You cannot win. No. Stop trying. And here's the other thing. I think that they would love to do this. I think Hollywood legitimately has no clue how to do it without being offensive. There's too many landmines, like you said. Being offensive in the real way that it can be offensive or being offensive to Both. a very small faction of people. Both. What? Never mind. Wait, what? I'm gonna let that go. We don't. We don't. We don't. Never mind here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just thought, I was like, was that on purpose? What is? A very small faction of people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, like they 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 don't know how to make something like this. And there there's a lot to be said about there has been a lot of media that's been made that uh, that makes light of. Of, of those conditions, but I don't think that it's well, fair. Peter Dinklage has literally done that before. Yeah. He has taken roles that are supposedly typecasting him mm -hmm. and are meant to crack a joke at his stature. Mm -hmm. Think about Elf. the scene. Yes, mm -hmm. in Elf, that's immediately what I thought of where he... He has said publicly that he wishes he hadn't done that. So. Okay, but you were an adult man who took yeah. the role and yeah. knew exactly what it was yeah. and you clearly you know, thought it was funny enough and not offensive at the time. He's definitely the wrong one here. He's 100% wrong. I, I don't disagree with her point. I, just, I understand her fire, but yeah. I disagree with the, for, the ferocity of it. It's not... There, like so my cousin is uh, has dwarfism, mm -hmm. um, had, um, and uh, uh, there is. Uh, you have to admit that there is a. That you're not going to, not not going to. There's a certain role that you're that they're going to fill. That they're going to fill, yeah. And so taking that away for the the uh, facade of being sensitive. Sensitivity doesn't pay your bills. No, and like, and if, that's what a lot of the actors have said. The ones yeah. who are still uh, hungry to get those roles. Yeah, like there's an not, entire agency that uh, Warwick yeah. Davis has started just for this, and yeah. it's like that's amazing. That's like uh, uh, lemonade, right? Yeah. Um, I think of Peter Dinklage, Vern Troyer, uh, Meredith Eaton, Warwick Davis, who's making Willow, mm -hmm. which is coming out. Um, the the wrestler Hornswoggle. Also, there's a show right now called Reservation Dogs that mm -hmm. has two actors. Um, was it uh, Lil Mike? That's his actual name. Mm -hmm. uh, at least on the show, it's like a stage name. Uh, and and Funny Bone. That's the name of the two actors. Mm -hmm. uh, that's their stage names. Uh, who are incredible in that show. Yeah. As like uh, they, they're like these side. They're not in every episode, but they're they're drive by characters, right? You right. see them every mm -hmm. so often. And uh, I think of Meredith Eaton, who played a, a legendary episode of House, where she goes toe to toe with House in every scene, uh, and yeah. gains his respect in a way most of the regular, like you know, the non um, main cast members ever actually do in the in that episode. And she wasn't even the like it was her daughter mm -hmm. that was the the patient. Uh, she was also in the MacGyver remake and plays a a, a character that is it's never talked about. Her, her stature is never, at least that, not that I remember in the seasons that I remember, it's never referenced. That's an example of it being used well uh, in network TV. Linda Hunt 
uh, is an actress who's I, I don't know if she is necessarily uh, I don't know if she what height she is but she's very very short I think she is technically considered mm. um, a little person I could be wrong about that but I can think of a couple of examples off the top of my head right but the, the world can't bend to your whims and it also speaks to the idea that Hollywood will remake anything however they want and they've been remaking everything for years uh, in the name of inclusion and now they're remaking it differently and now they don't like it yeah. You you know you're getting uh, it's your own sword that's stabbing you in the back. I just think if you have taken a role that in the past uh, that now goes against your new feelings about inclusion and diversity, then you were working against your own cause. And yes, all you, all of those years on your soapbox. Um, didn't actually like change anyone's hearts or minds. There too. Yeah. yeah, somebody somebody pointed that out in the <laughs> comments. Yeah, was uh, he was he kidding when he said that? <laughs> I don't think he was kidding. I don't, I don't think he was kidding when he said that. Uh, like so, he's he's openly working against his own cause. Yeah. Yep. When film Gore wrote on Twitter, "We are made. Uh, why are they ma- remaking Time Bandits without the small people?" They're, uh, they're a big part of the film, no pun intended. People complain about wanting gay, trans, minorities in films. Why is nobody demanding representation for the little people? Pathetic. I do believe that they don't genuinely know how to write it in in a way that actually seems um, sensitive to their uh, to what's going on, to, to the, the realities of the situation, uh, and that the, the, the script writers and the people that could write that stuff are a dime a dozen. And that they would not, they just... Well, now in Hollywood's deranged, like, uh, standard, they would have to fill a writer's room with only yes. people with yeah. dwarfism so that they could write something accurate to the the real world experience. Which is weird because they're writing and that's something that's not a real world experience. Literally impossible. I don't know how you would source a writer's room of, like, even 10 screenwriters with dwarfism anyway to do that but that is the the industry standard they're trying to push right now and it's not feasible and it's a failure by the way i'm going to point out that that is legitimately a failure telling people that they have to look or or have the same identity markers as your character first of all it's a tacit admis- admission of the failure of creativity mm. uh yeah. Making it out that, that you have to live a similar life to the person you're creating is telling me that art isn't real and that creativity is, is void in your business. But the examples that they always give, never, Eternals, didn't work out. Uh, She-Hulk, didn't work out. You do not get to decide what is, uh, what is creative and what isn't. As if, some, as if a, a girl can't write a guy character well and as if a guy mm-hmm. can't write a girl character well, that is bull. It's yeah, bad. and we even pointed out in the case of She-Hulk that that heavily female writer's room yeah. is also a writer's room that has the experience of single careerist city yeah. women, yep. not women in general. So the goal of representing women's experience by doing that doesn't actually land yeah, but You're only getting one female experience there. By their logic, they should only be telling stories about middle-aged women in Los Angeles with no kids <laughs> who are... Uh, the women cool. who aren't lawyers, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they admitted that down the way, too, that they, they, they tried to write a lawyer show. How far show. can you take this? Yeah, they, they, they realized like halfway through like the, when they were writing the first episode that they had no idea how to write a lawyer, so they just gave up. But still called it She-Hulk Attorney at Law. Right, exactly. Even though it was somehow managed just fine for Legally Blonde. Could have hired David E. Kelly, but he's not a woman. So how? <laughs> what would he know? Right? Mm. Hey, actually, that's another. That's a good point. We're kind of off topic, but like, Take so that Johnny you, Depp lawyer. You need you need women writers to write women characters, but you don't need lawyer writers to write lawyer characters. When does it end? Yeah. And that means there would actually be context and expertise needed. Yeah. It, that's an example where it actually matters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but the... I feel like consultants are a thing. Well, yeah. I mean, they have, like, any law enforcement show has a law enforcement yeah. consultant on uh, mm-hmm. on air. I mean, look at how the, the people who have wrote, like, uh, all of the famous 
to, like Tom Clancy, the amount of research they did to write all their books is insane because to make it feel authentic, they had to do a bunch of research. It doesn't mean he went and did buds and became a Navy SEAL. Yeah. It means he did a bunch of yeah. research about a world that he wasn't familiar with. I like to make the joke that John Grisham did so much research that he became a lawyer. There you go. <laughs> what about Stephen King? What research does he do? Uh, cocaine. To yeah. <laughs> to, to have that. Is that Twitter. confirmed? <laughs> All but confirmed. Yeah. Yeah, all but I mean, he said that. Yeah. That uh, most of his the books 80s. in the 70s and 80s were cocaine fueled. Uh, which you know what? We could make the argument that those those were good times. Yeah, it's like man. Metallica was better when they were alcoholics. Yeah. Well, they're still alcoholics, but they when they were. You know, <laughs> not I recovery. Guess the excuse to uh, not get consultants for the context and details that actually matter, like making a show about a lawyer, would be uh, it's about a superhero. Doesn't, so it matter. doesn't matter. It's not yeah. supposed to be realistic. There's no real world superheroes. We can't get it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, you know what? Hire Meredith. Perfect Eaton. cop out. That's I'm, when it's okay to turn your brain off. I am going to, Not I am going to, um, I'm going to stand that Meredith Eaton gets all the roles because she's great in everything she's in. Warwick Davis is still kicking and going strong. Uh, his kids are acting. His and, kids and, are yeah, in, yeah. in, in, in Willow. Yeah. It's, here's a, here's a funny story. When me and Mary, when we discussed D23, I remember this. We discussed D23. and I we, didn't know that Willow existed. <laughs> so like, I thought that Willow was an original <laughs> thing. She goes, literally everything was a remake, but that one, and I'm like, what? Which one wasn't a remake? She goes, Willow. I'm like, oh no. No, that's that's no. Nope, yeah, still but a, now they're Ron like Howard classic. they yeah. are. Ra they'd rather scrape the absolute bottom of the barrel for the cult classics of the '80s, the cult, cult, cult classics, yeah. well, uh, rather than create something new that could be even more popular today. Is, there's an Evil Dead show and remake, so you're Ash not wrong. Ash vs. Evil Dead. Ash vs. Evil Dead, uh, and then Evil without Dead 2013. The one with Bruce Campbell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a movie, too. Yeah. Fiddy Alvarez disaster, in my opinion. I never saw it. No. Uh, Evil Dead was It's my thing. very serious. Was <laughs> Raimi involved? No. In in the show, even? In the show, yes. In the show, yes. writer or just producer? Director. Oh, he directed it. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's episodes. It's, so, yeah. The annoying part is how they're like, and then it's so-and-so's producing. I'm like, that doesn't really yeah. James matter. James Cameron yeah. is what you're talking about. <laughs> they, they did the same thing when they did the, um, do you remember um, Superhero Cafe? Batman and Superman, like they, they, Batman and Superman sit across from each other at a cafe and they talk to talk to each other. And Superman's always really nice, and Batman's always kind of just like, <laughs> you know, it's not how it should have ended. It, it, no, it is. Oh, it's okay, like, but it. it's that's the segment, right? So oh, it's from yeah, how it should have yeah, ended. Yeah. And they do the thing where they're like, Superman's talking about the launch of Man of Steel. And, and he's like, why did the, in Batman's like, why did you put Christopher Nolan's name in there? Because Christopher <laughs> Nolan produced the movie. They're like, yeah. you, you and I both know that has nothing to do with this movie. Yeah. Has, it doesn't matter yeah. at all. So, yeah. So we'll see. This is, this is one there? of those stories where this probably won't get the, the, the reach she wants because whether they like it or not, being for inclusion when it comes to gay rights, uh, to trans, uh, to tra to characters that are trans and all these things, that's fashionable right now. And what Hollywood cares about is what's fashionable. It's not fashionable for them to promote uh, somebody, uh, uh, more people that have dwarfism or, or little people to the front of the. I really marquee. haven't seen much of a push for that. Uh, like any actors or actresses with disabilities other than in like modeling i see it in acting uh they did it with um uh, some people were mad like i remember there was even proto um pushback they were like why is daredevil why like why did they cast charlie cox to play daredevil originally because he's he was, not blind because he's not blind yeah. and i'm like because yeah. there's they do show flash because he yeah. still has to act like he yeah. is he yeah. can see because yeah. that's what the superhero part of it yeah. is but and that's still a bad argument like having an actor play. And this is the one time in that realm of conversation that I actually agree, whether it's any sort of LGBT hue um, representation. Sure. That's a hundred percent fine, but you don't like to say that you are that. So that's the only thing you can play is kind of weirdly limiting. And you know, like it must be somebody who does this, then you are going to Thank only you. play those roles. Right. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. if you're uh, a, a, an example of that is, did you ever watch the, um, uh, uh, no, 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 wrong. Um, House of the Dragon, the girl, the grown-up version of Rhaenyra. Yeah, she's amazing, but in their view, in in that world viewpoint, she would only play characters that are that. 
yeah. that what she is in real life, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or what she lives as. Like uh, I said, the worst job in the world right now would be a casting director. But you can, you can, it, you are not outwardly locked into something, right? Yeah. If you are one of those things. But if you are one of these people, you are. Hollywood weirdly demands that actors and actresses have no boundaries mm -hmm. uh, about what they're willing to do on camera. But like when it comes to their identity markers, right, it has reverse, to reflect yeah. who they are in real life. Make any sense. It, That's a rigid yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't have any of your own boundaries. Nope. It's a, it's it's a hypocritical. horrible industry. <laughs> it is a horrible industry. It's a horrible industry. <laughs> Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.